is happening ladies and gentlemen my name is Ty behind the camera from Ty Drives and sitting in front of us is the 2024 Volkswagen Tiguan and we have a absolutely gorgeous example for us to take a look at today this one is an SEL R-Line with the King's Red exterior paint and full black leather interior so we have a ton of very nice features to look at gorgeous breathtaking red color on this vehicle and throughout the video we're going to first take a look at what makes this Tiguan different on the outside we'll then pop the hood detail the power train and then we'll take a look at what's under the trunk since we can option this on to being a third row vehicle however this particular one is a two row vehicle we'll then take a look at the second row of seating and finally our first row of seating but you're going to want to make sure to stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to mount this GoPro to my head. And we're going to take this Tiguan for a little test drive and put it through its paces. Now, first things first, let's detail the lighting since we do have a very nice setup of IQ lighting, which means your high and low beams are LED powered as well as your daytime running lights and turn signals. We have all LED units up top for all of your bulbs. And as you can see right there with the sun shining on it, beautiful king's red paint for this car. We have uh, parking sensors that surround the front bumper and this beautiful design for the R-Line uh, kind of trim. So we have all the gloss black with a subtle chrome accents down below and the same idea as up front too. Nice large Volkswagen emblem right up front. As we can see, one of these lines here is actually a light bar. So we have a light bar going into the Volkswagen emblem and out towards the little R-Line logo. And we also have a front camera. So 360 degrees view camera system on this top trim Volkswagen T1. Very sharp lines on this car. And you can see them especially on the hood and also going down the side. We have special wheels for the SCL R-Line trim, and they are 20-inch wheels wrapped in 255-40 rubber. So we have kind of black painted pockets and machine face to the wheel. And they also have black cladding surrounding the wheels too to protect that paint. Nice R trim on the side here with our, um, our side mirrors with LED turret signal indicators and blind spot warning on the inside of the mirror right here. Now these mirrors are heated, power folding, and also have, again, more cameras to support that 360 degree view camera system. And we also have the smart key uh, entry system too on the door with this little button where you can lock the vehicle and then just put your hand behind the handle to unlock. We have a little Volkswagen emblem right here on the uh, B pillars and as you can see a total sticker price for this particular vehicle forty one thousand one hundred and four dollars is that a steep price for this car we sure will find out throughout this video lots of chrome trim surrounding the windows and also up there with our roof rails we have a gloss black shark fin antenna and your panoramic sunroof up there Pretty understated so, uh, spoiler with your third brake light, third wiper back here. And to match the front with the lighting, we have all LEDs back here. So the tail lights, turn signals, and brake lights are all LED powered, even down to the reversing lights. We have some chrome trim back here, kind of surrounding the rear bumper towards the bottom. We do unfortunately have fake exhaust tips, but they do have a pretty cool chrome look with some black accents too. Uh, parking sensors all the way back here as well. We also have a pretty nice bump, bumper protector. They call it the bumper dillo uh, for the Volkswagens. And we have our Volkswagen T1 embling, emblem. And right below we have a reversing camera and the trunk release. And of course we have the 4Motion badge. So this will likely be the last model year in the United States for this generation of Tiguan. It has been out for a little while now, but I think especially in this SEL R-Line trim, this is still an awesome looking crossover. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. 
Popping the hood on the Tiguan 42024 in North America, that is, we have one single engine choice, which is a two liter turbocharged four cylinder. Produces 184 horsepower, which doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it does have 221 pound feet of torque, so that is the more impressive number there. Now, we of course have the choice between front wheel drive or all wheel drive, except in the top tier trim like this one, all wheel drive will come standard. And everything is all hooked up regardless of drivetrain to an 8-speed automatic, which shifts buttery smooth. So we will find out if this 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder is enough power for this T1 in the test drive. So make sure you stay tuned with us. So, popping the power liftgate in the T1. It is powered on the SE and above trim, so everything but the base model gets a power tailgate once you have that opened up we have lots and lots of room back here as you can see there is tie downs in each corner back here we also have the nice all-weather floor mats in this car um, we have grocery bag hangers also a spot to put a cargo shade which you could see neatly stores underneath if you don't want to use it and the nicest feature about this trunk besides the space itself are these little latches here so you can just pull that right down and the seat will fold down and you could just kind of go, go on over and kind of snap it flat down into space into place and of course the other uh, parts of the seat do fold down too in a 40 20 40 fashion if you'd like to close the trunk you of course have a nice easy button to press and it closes down nice and quickly for you all right, now that we have made our way into the interior, we can take a look at the rear seats first. Now, as far as materials go, we do have harder to the touch materials up here and all the way down, but where it counts is nice, soft to the touch leatherette surfaces. So we have the black portions here where your arm rests with the white stitching is uh, that kind of leatherette material. We of course have your door handle, window switch, and a pretty decent amount of storage. And we have the nice uh, Fender audio system in this car. Genuine leather seats on this SEL uh, R-Line trim level. So, and they seem to be a little bit more comfier um, from those trims with the leatherette seat. So we can see nice attention to detail, more of that white stitching and even white piping. And uh, perforations in the center with some same color stitching too and you can also fold down the center ski hatch but first the way you fold down the pole seat is kind of this little tether here and that will fold it down flat it does go flat I just don't want to click it into place because then I can, can't get it back up with my other hand but if you press this little button right here my thumb is can fold down the center sort of ski hatch and you can still fit two passengers back here and you can also fold down an armrest with two cup holders the amount of space this Tiguan has is kind of its claim to fame so just remember how much room we had in the trunk space now I'm five foot ten and take a look at how much leg space I have back here. This car is really pretty big for the segment that it's in. Now, once we're back here, we have um, our air vents, a little storage tray here, a USB-C charger, as well as a 12-volt power outlet. Totally usable center seat because we have a pretty small uh, drivetrain hump. We also have mat pockets on either of the uh, backs of the front seats. Full black headliner on this car and the panoramic roof continues very nicely back here too. We have grab handles and LED lights back here. And let's take a look at the driver's cockpit. Again, starting on the door, a little bit nicer materials. We have soft to touch up here. So if you like to rest your elbow up here like I do when I drive, um, it'll be nice and comfy. You have some kind of simulated wood trim with a little bit more bright work up here too. So a little bit bright work up top with your door handle and a couple of accents here and there. 
Quite a few more buttons with all of your mirror adjustments, so your heated and power folding functions are there, as well as all of your windows and your window lockout. We also have a button here to pop your power trunk lid and the fender branding for the speakers. Quite a bit of room in the um, in the door pockets too, and they're all kind of carpeted too, which is very nice. So nothing really rattles around in there. We have a air vent on the left of the dash, as well as all of your lighting. Kind of you have uh, your fog lights too, where you can pull them out like so. You have a nice storage cubby in there where you could put loose things. Nice set of metal pedals too for the SEL R line. And you get this little R line sill down here as well. You also have the release for the tilt telescoping steering wheel right there on the side of the steering column. And very nice and comfy seat for the R-Line. Again, genuine leather for this car. On the most basic Tiguan, you can get cloth, and the two middle trims, you can get leatherette, and on the top tier here, you get genuine leather seats. So we have kind of uh, the best of each, uh, I guess, material in the seating world for all of the Tiguan models. Full power seats with two-way lumbar, and you also get three-person memory on the driver's seat. So, pretty traditional Volkswagen key for the T1, although we do have the updated logo on the flip side and also a switch to release a physical key in case you need it. But we have the lock, unlock, trunk release, and remote start on the other side, as well as a panic alarm on the side of the key. We have our push button start right down here next to the gear shifter. And as we can see, a very nice looking um, cockpit here starting to show its age just a little bit but um, again this will be the last model year of this generation of Tiguan in the United States so just keep that in mind now as far as the steering wheel go we have a different steering wheel for the R-Line models much more beefy kind of bolsters in the steering wheel and you also get this kind of perforated design and a flat bottom at the uh, sort of bottom of the steering wheel with the R-Line logo. It's a much more attractive steering wheel on the uh, sportier R-Line uh, trim models. Now we do have some not so favorable uh, capacitive touch buttons on the steering wheel. This one will control all of your adaptive cruise control settings with a volume slider at the bottom. Across the airbag cover we have your voice commands all of your different adjustments for the virtual display up there, uh, your heated steering wheel controls, and your skipping between different tracks um, at the bottom there with a, another slider. Uh, not so favorable in the fact that, uh, for one, it's gloss black, so you got fingerprints all over the place. And for two, they don't really work all that well, especially with the volume and changing between different tracks. Uh, but that is something that Volkswagen has listened to customers on, and they will be changing that soon for the next generation T1. So just keep that in mind, too. Take a look at the back of the steering wheel. We have our turn signals, high beams, of course, and a little button at the end to change, uh, to turn on and off your lane keeping assist. And another stock to the other side for your front and rear wipers. Now here is our fully digital gauge cluster. Now this is kind of like a default um, view with your large tachometer, large speedometer, and then you also have your coolant temperature right over here and the fuel gauge right down there. Now we can press the view button and you kind of get three different views with the Tiguan. Kind of like a full screen uh, view right there. Um, some information to either side and a more traditional um, two dial setup there. Now if we go back to the full screen view, we can then start configuring what we see in that view using our four quadrants. So we can move back and forth to see a full screen audio, telephone, uh, vehicle status, vehicle driving data, assist systems and back to your navigation now you can also press up and down to zoom in and out of your navigation map and over to your audio you can also change your source over to your phone uh, the vehicle status which will display 
and you also have your driving data which you could choose what you see in there so that is pretty neat you kind of have your uh, fuel range your assist systems too which you could turn a couple of them on and off through that screen there and then if you press view you can get any one of those views with whatever you selected in the center so that is pretty neat pretty neat gauge cluster there lots of customability and I really do like that uh, those virtual gauges take a look up top we have a nice soft to touch dashboard with a little bit of storage up top there put some sunshades a couple of air vents with the hazards button right in between and we do have a pretty nice 8 inch touch screen with kind of your uh, touch capacitive buttons to either side if we go to menu that is kind of like your home screen there with a jumbulation of all the different apps and we do have some um, sort of kind of a virtual command so you kind of swipe your hand back and forth like that to get different menus so that is a pretty cool feature of it but we'll quickly go through a couple of the different screens we have the audio screen right here with all of your different sources all of your presets will show up right here and you can kind of uh, tune right there too although you do have a tune knob and a, a volume knob here too we have all of our shortcuts for media phone and you can pull up your voice commands there you can also pull up the navigation here too your app connect has to do with the android auto and apple carplay and we also have the uh, car screen which has to do with your trip computers You can also adjust some things with your virtual cockpit up there. And we also have vehicle status, so if you have any maintenance reminders and things like that. And we also have a pretty cool um, off-roading screen here, which kind of displays your steering angle, um, a compass, uh, your real-time elevation. So that is a pretty cool screen to have there. Back to our menu, let's see if there's anything that we don't have um, in here that I didn't mention before. We can control the climate control through the touch screen with the temperatures, the fan speed. And we also have some settings to go through as well. You can swipe from the top to get your gauge brightness as well as pulling up your sound settings and kind of just muting the audio. So a couple of shortcuts from the top there too, but pretty nice screen. St again, starting to feel a little bit dated, uh, but that will be fixed in the next uh, generation of Tiguan, which is coming soon. Now down here, we have all of our climate controls. So pretty simple, uh, kind of touch capacitive buttons, but they do work pretty good. So we have our temperatures right here to either side. Again, dual zone climate control. And we also have our fan speed right here too. And you can also tap the little fan icons too to get it up or down. We have three stage heated and cooled seats up front. And I guess you could have them on simultaneously. We have our front and rear defrosters. And then also where you would like the air to blow. And then we'll also pop up right on the bottom of the screen there. So that's pretty cool. Down here we have a wireless charging phone pad with two USB-C connections and a 12 volt power outlet. Down here at our center stack, we have a couple of things going on, mainly your gear shifter, which is a kind of nice, uh, nicely designed piece where you can pull it down into reverse. Your reversing camera, of course, will pop up with the guidance lines. And you can also pull up the 360 degrees view camera system, as you can see. There are more options when you come up uh, to this here. Kind of a trailer hookup, a wide angle rear view, and some more settings there too. And you can also turn on and off your parking sensors in case you're towing a small trailer. Of course, have neutral drive, and then you can also bump it over into a sport mode, or a, I should say a manual mode. So if you bump it over, you put it into a manual mode where you can start shifting with the gear shifter down here. But then once you're ready in drive, you can bump it down like so, and that will put you into a kind of sport mode. Of our electronic parking brake, and right above your start-stop button. Right down here we have a mode selector, so there's kind of like 
uh, four main modes and then a couple of different modes within each other. That's the best way I could explain it. We can move it over into snow. Um, your kind of selection mode where you have eco, normal, sport, and then a custom. You can also move it over into off-road and then also a custom off-road which you can adjust. There's actually quite a few things that you can adjust in the off-road custom mode. And then we also have the normal, um, I guess you could say custom mode, which you can adjust a few different things as well. But for now, I suppose we could just leave it into the normal mode. A couple of other buttons down here too, we could shut on and off the auto start stop feature. We can also engage the automatic parking feature too, which is pretty neat. So. It'll command us to put a turn signal and shift into reverse once we're ready to park, which is pretty cool, and that will do parallel parking. And then we can also activate our parking sensors and pull up our 360 degree view camera system at any time with this bottom button. Down here we have a couple of cup holders and a little uh, storage tray here to put some loose change or whatnot. Pretty nice cover to the center console and but a little pretty small center console in there but it does go pretty deep the passenger area we have more simulated wood trim and a pretty large glove box taking a look up top we have our visors with the mirror light and card holder we have some SOS and informational buttons up top here we have our button to open up the sunshade, which I will show you when it's open. We have all of our lighting controls up here too with all the LED buttons. Then we also have this one here to slide back and forth, which will open the front portion of the sunroof, uh, the glass portion, I should say. It'll either tilt or slide. So once we have the sunshade open, it is nice and airy in here and lets in lots of sun. And once you close up the sunshade like you saw in most of the video, um, you really can't get any light through at all. So that pretty much does it for all of the features on the 2024 Volkswagen Tiguan SEL R-Line. Let's get it out on the road and see how it drives. So setting off in the 2024 Tiguan, let's see how this thing drives. Now, full disclaimer, I've driven a couple of Tiguans in the past. Obviously, I've done some videos on them uh, throughout the years. But um, first time I'm really getting to drive one of these SELR lines, um, which some people tell me they actually drive a little bit different than the more normal Tiguans. The same engine, same transmission. Uh, but we do have a little bit larger tires and first thing I notice is it seems to be a bit more quiet than uh, an SE or an ST one. Um, so that is definitely one thing that I had noticed. It's very, very quiet in here. Um, not a whole lot of tire noise, uh, not a whole lot of wind noise either. Really no noise coming from the mirrors. You just get a slight whir from the cars uh, on coming, which is pretty cool. But a little overview of the test drive. Most of this test drive, we're going to be on some nice back roads. Uh, so we'll take a right up here at this next traffic light. Uh, we'll kind of get an acceleration test, see if this 2-liter turbo works for the Tiguan. And we'll take it through some nice uh, Connecticut back roads. I, I don't know how else to explain it other than that. Um, lots of elevation change, some pretty rough roads, so we'll get a suspension test too. And I guess we'll also get to test out how it handles. So here, we can even put it into the sport mode too, if you'd like. It'll change up the color of the gauges to red, of course. And what I like to do is get the car up to 25 and mash the throttle and see what happens. So let's do that now. So not too bad acceleration from the Tiguan, really not at all. It's that torque figure uh, that definitely gets it uh, moving here. 
the eight-speed automatic did a pretty good job of getting us in the right gear uh, somewhat quickly and uh, as soon as we were in the power band we took right off so that's a pretty good pretty good power delivery if you ask me plenty of power there and uh, it gets to you quick enough First thing you notice on a back road with the Tiguan is the steering is nice and light, but it's got a pretty direct ratio, meaning even the slightest bit that you turn the wheel, you are going. Uh, so it's got a pretty direct, uh, pretty fast steering ratio there. And initial thoughts on the ride quality too is it's pretty good. We have some pretty big wheels. They are 20 inches, which means you have a little bit smaller sidewalls than in most of the rest of the Tiguan lineup. Uh, but it does seem to ride pretty good so far. pretty impressed with the sound insulation on this car there really isn't a whole lot of noise intrusion and even at wide open throttle uh, just back there there wasn't a whole lot of engine noise getting in so I'd say this is a pretty quiet car There's a pretty nice S turn right here, so I guess we'll give it a shot. Lots of accessories and things moving around in the trunk. <laughs> yeah, not too bad in the handling department. Obviously, there's some body roll, it is a somewhat taller SUV but uh, not too bad in the corners. The seats definitely keep, keep you in nice. There's a good amount of bolstering for your backside. And uh, this is just about the roughest stretch of the road. So we'll see, this is a true suspension test here. And it really does ride pretty good. It's very solid. It'll definitely ride a little bit better if you got these smaller wheels, but this is just fine. Also, for some reason, the seats in this car with the real leather, as I said before, seem to have a slight advantage in comfort over the ones that are have the, have the leatherette seating surfaces. Um, I'm not entirely sure that it's a completely different seat, but um, it, it very well could be. Uh, stuff with some kind of different foam or something because it just feels a little bit softer But they are pretty comfortable, you know the thigh support comes out nice and long um, Although it's not adjustable, but it does come out a nice amount of ways And we also have that two-way lumbar that helps out a bit Just giving you that little extra edge in comfort Really just on our small test drive route, this Tiguan does a great job. And kind of just to sum it up, it is definitely quiet. And it's got plenty of power and it is plenty comfortable. And it's also pretty darn big for the class that it's in, uh, kind of size wise. And that pretty much does it for the entire video of the 2024 Volkswagen Tiguan. I hope you have enjoyed the video very much and I hope you also stay with us here at Tide Drives for more videos just like this one in the future.